All right, YouTube, we're going to play a little bit more Mardu Pyromancer today. A um, little bit of a couple adjustments from last night's list. I think I added a 25th or, or 21st land, but I added a Godless Shrine just to make sure I can cast uh, Liliana. The Veil just helped my double black cards while having another white source. And um, I just cut the Dark Blast and Moody Vitality over the side. So there's not too much change. So we're going to jump back into it this morning. <clears throat> Hopefully we can get some coffee and thought seize. Thought seize some people and drink some coffee. Excuse me. It's taking a while to. Oh, there we go. All I have to do is complain about something, and then it's it's going to load up. We'll be good. I think I'm going to keep this. If we hit a second land, we're we're going to have all we need here with removal. But we also could just be playing against like a non removable creature or a combo deck and you discard. So I actually think we're a mulligan. Alright, we'll keep this one. That's just disruption, so we'll put it on top. This is a place where the godless shrine looks nice. Yep, it's a good thing that I'm... Oh, I'm Crystal Visions. Okay. So we're playing against probably like a Blue Moon deck. I'm just going to make this a little more difficult. If we can land this Liliana, we're probably in good shape, but... That is easier said than done. Because we're going to have to catch up with this Ancestral Vision somehow. All right, so we are going to have to discard spell them. Kind of have to get Godless Shrine. There's not really. I'm going to go Thoughtseize just in case we want to take a, um, a Blood Moon. Snapcaster, Snapcaster, Lightning Bolt, Jace. I'm going to put two cards on the bottom. I'm just going to take this Jace. Jace is going to go way over the top of anything we do. Even though Snapcaster is very good, hopefully we can Lingering Souls our way out to fight that. Right, so they hit not. Look on the bottom, they, they found Serum Visions. Oh, I didn't even play my land, oh my gosh. It's so early, that is so bad. If I rip a land next turn, I could've just slammed this. <sighs> what a tilt. Alright, well we didn't do it anyways, so we might as well just go target opponent reveals. I'm gonna go escalate two modes. We're not gonna well, we could bolt that pyromancer, so I think we're just gonna duress them, get rid of their lightning bolt. God, if we could just slam really on the veil there, it would have been so nice. I guess you just got bolt snap bolt, which isn't that nice, but that doesn't hit anything. So we'll pass. I guess I could have escalated and ditched. I could have escalated and ditched like a lingering soul just has something to do this turn. 
but this is going to be rough. Because they're already sitting on three big spells. That's all I got. Okay. This is tough. They're probably going to go snap opt. I can't really. Oh, click. Alright, well, we have to kill this. Targeting me. Our hand's pretty stacked. Like, we might be able to hang with this. If I were him, I don't think I would take anything. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. I'm surprised my opponent... Oh, they're blue, white, red. So don't... We know they don't have, like, a Teferi. Or if they do have Teferi, they have, like, Logic Knot. Because they wouldn't just slam, they wouldn't just like run this to ferry out into the dread war. That should help. Probably gonna ditch these two. Spell caller, okay. <coughs> so, like a much faster version of the deck. Yeah. We, what we have going for us is we know they have a bunch of snapcasters, but they don't have um, they don't have like a lot of counter spells to flashback. So we have to hit this. Hopefully this resolves. Okay. I would like to cast this. All right, we don't need any of these Bedlam Revelers. I'm just trying to thought he's one of these Snapcasters. I'm going to take, go to nine, then take five, go to four, go to one. Yeah, I mean, I've got a Snapcast. Got to take out one of these. And then, like, hope to hit a land, collect their Brutality. Wow, that's a lot of burn. I'm just dead, right? So I take this, go to nine. They go snap bolt, which deals me to six. They crack me for five. Yeah, we're just dead. <clears throat> yep, that was tough. In the sideboarding. I just needed to hit my third land drop, I think, to have a good shot at that. I think I definitely want this collective brutality. Um the Chandra's a maybe. Hey, how you doing this morning? How you doing, Tim? You didn't uh, did you play the Legacy GP there, boss? Yeah, no, I'm an early, I'm normally an early morning guy. I kind of want all these, and I want, I could even be talked into like the last hopes on the play, especially, so to help clean up young pyromancer tokens. And I kind of just want to cut some thought seizes. They have Jaces, so I don't really want to cut all my thought seizes. Maybe I could actually just cut Inquisition. Uh, Color Knot's command actually doesn't seem that great. Let's try going like this, shaving here, shaving here. Let's try this. I'm gonna definitely gonna cut like some of these cards I'm gonna play and bring in more discard spells. <clears throat> it was awesome to see you do well in that team tournament. No, didn't swing the day off. 
Oh yeah, featuring Reed Duke like that was really awesome. Like, watching Reed play was really cool. All right, we'll keep this. This hand's not great, but it is decent. The Godless Shrine's helping out. Best weekend of 2018? Yeah, dude. It's nice. It's nice uh, getting, you know, doing well, getting up there, being in it. Definitely feels great. Got a shrine. That's not bad. I'd like to find a discard spell here. There's a discard spell. I'm going to ditch this. And I think I'm going to ditch this Lingering Souls. <coughs> We're getting close to Bed on Ugler. Fetch the planes. They fetched a planes. See if we can get a cryptic command or something like that. Oh, they just have a bunch of bolts. They have an is it static caster? Which that's annoying. They also have a Jace. So we're gonna have to like probably just gonna bedlam Reveler next turn. They played Spire Buff now, so that's what they drew. So let's just get this Sacred Foundry so we don't get fielded off of color. Oh, that's pretty great. Wow, they might flash in the Static Caster here, and we already get to bolt it. I really hope they flash the Static Caster in. I should have tapped my mana differently. I should have tapped this one. That's okay, though. We can just bolt it and cast Lingering Souls. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we're just gonna like while well I don't I really don't want to ditch these two cards. These two cards are pretty good. But they're just not gonna cast the static caster until I can get something out of it. So let's just do this. Let's just reveler. <coughs> We do ditch, ditch two good cards, but I, I think it's going to be tough to play around these play these two good cards. They did cast the Static Caster. I did not think they would do that. Oh, that, I should have known they were going to do that, because they can just go Static Caster, bolt my bed on my boy. That was stupid. That was very stupid. Now we are playing not good this morning. We are not awake, ladies and gentlemen. I think we're just going to go like this. And I'm going to hold my land, look to edict this thing next turn. So just have opt. Hey, bud. Check this out, Twitch chat. Look how, dog, look how big my dog is getting. Look at him. Look how huge he is. He used to be such a little guy. He's shy. He's hiding behind the chair. He's afraid of Twitch chat. I know, he's such a big guy. He's the big old doodlemeister. Okay, so I play Colonnade, which kind of puts a damper in our um, Liliana plan, sort of. Just 
So he doesn't have a counter spell for this. Right, the flash is in a snapcaster, okay. So really I still have this mountain, so we're just gonna go get a basic. Cast this from our graveyard. <coughs> and now we have that colonnade on lockdown. <coughs> we can take out Ditch of Lingering Souls cast to play Liliana. Oh, we do not have this colonnade on lockdown anymore. That was unfortunate. Man, Electrolyze is so good. But at least this means that we're going to, like, our other Liliana is going to resolve. We'll get back Battle of the Bevelar and we'll flash back Lingering Souls. So it is kind of a tough... Well, just kidding there. I still think I'm going to cast this... I wish I had a Pyromancer. Take it up. Flashback Souls. And then we can cast the Bedlam Reveler with like some protection next turn. <coughs> Can be able to smoke that Liliana was pretty solid. And this is just like deal. I will play this game all day long, sir. What is this? Is this a lightning bolt? At my last hope? Oh no, it's a relic. Uh oh. Man. That is such a buzzkill. All right, well, let's take a look here. See if we can get a good spell here. Mana leak. I probably could have saved that for next turn. But I wanted to get two spells in the graveyard because it's also going to make it so I can reveler this turn. <clears throat> or next turn if I hit a land. And I could just roll my Liliana down and hope to hit and then cast Bedlam Reveler, but that means it gets bolted. Jeez. So they still, they don't have this colony anymore. So I'll run this out there. Okay, I probably could have played, at least played around that a little better. I think I'm playing this deck a little too aggressively. Okay, so he bolts one. So it looks like we're going to race here, which I'm okay with racing because I'm just going to have enough Lingering Souls to buy myself more time and ultimately win the race. What could that card be? I don't really know what it could be. I don't think it's worth casting this. I guess it could be like an Is It Static Caster. What could it be? It wouldn't be a Teferi. It's probably like a lightning bolt. So I think I'm just going to play another one and pass. I might as well cast it. Like eight with one card isn't that bad as long as we don't get, yeah. As long as we don't get our board cleared. <coughs> Whoa. 
All right, J-Hitman. Wow, they scooped to that? I guess I do have like a wall of Lingering Souls tokens. Okay, so now we're gonna board a little differently on the draw. We're gonna bring in more removal and uh, just slow our deck, make it so our deck's a little more lean. Or we're, we're gonna at least board something like this. Um, they have purges. Probably don't need all of these pushes, even though some of them do handle Planeswalkers well. We're going to cut this on the draw. It's going to be harder to play it on a stable board. I want to cut at least my last hopes on the draw, I think, because they have plenty of graveyard hate. I don't mind playing Colorgon's Command because you can play it at instant speed and kind of like fight over their mana a little bit. Yeah, let's try this. <sighs> Not exactly super sold on how to sideboard with this deck, but I do think that I want to be like, I guess a spell squatter deck, I, I kind of want to try to just be like not tempoed out of the game. Okay, we'll keep this. It's not great, but it's a lot of, uh, we can get this Liliana in play, we're in good shape. How many you play this deck and what's your record? I don't play this deck too often. Um, this is my first match of the league. So, I guess we're even, even. I don't play this deck too, too much. I'm playing this deck because I can't play, I can't play Death Shadow at Grand Prix Detroit because it takes too many cards. The search for his content? Okay, we're going to. Deal with that right now, and I'm going to deal with it with a push because Dreadboar deals with Planeswalkers. Um, Lightning Bolt kills Spellcaller easier. <coughs> oh, yeah. I do miss casting this card. Especially ditching Lingering Souls with it. Oh wow, they ditched a Jace, it's gas. Cast this before we use Liliana. Because if they spell call this, I can just edict it. So. Huh. I do kind of want to take this Pyromancer. Because Pyromancer is best, the best card against Liliana. Or I can just take the 2 for 1. I'm going to take the 2 for 1. I should be able to manipulate or maneuver my way around the, these spell colors. So let's go like this. If he goes to spell color this, then I'll just edict it. I'm going to just ditch my Dread Boar. <clears throat> Actually, I'm going to ditch the Lingering Souls. <coughs> okay, they ditch a Spell Caller. That's a nice trick about Spell Caller and the Lion of the Veil is you cast your spells before you use it. He might click himself. No. Yeah, just decided not to play Blood Moon. Like, I, I don't think that they just scooped it up. Okay. Um... I, like, I'm definitely slanting the deck a little bit towards um, what I think we're going to play at a unified modern event. I think it makes sense. Because, like, <clears throat> yeah, I'm just, like, punting to Tron. I don't think you have a very good Tron matchup even with Blood Moon. And I just, I don't think that Tron will see as much play at the event. Like, I think, I think that the Mox Opal seat will be a lot of Ironworks. Oh, no, lots of the Ancient Stirring Seats will be Ironworks or the Hardened Scales deck. <coughs> At least I think those are two better decks than Tron. But yeah, I, I don't think I, I don't think I don't think I can beat Tron, like regardless.
Yeah, because like, let's be real. The best way to play in a Grand Prix is either slant, is either do really well or just go like, oh three, and then go enjoy the city and play in the PTQ the next day. So I think I'm gonna just slant my deck to handle what I think we're gonna play, and then hopefully play those decks or be able to. Like I think that I can handle. I can play with players in day one of a Grand Prix, so if my deck's not super suitable to hang with them, heater. <clears throat> you know, my deck's not like super able to hang with what they have going on. Um, I can. How was I gonna say this? I can play my way into it, and then in day two, hopefully, have a deck advantage. I made a hella mac and cheese last night. That's awesome, Archmage. Are we playing Death Shadow? Or are we playing? <clears throat> are we playing Hollow One? I assume if they're cycling their street raids throughout the bat here, that we're not playing against. Like we're probably playing against Hollow One. Yeah. I think I'm just going to flash back with Green Souls. <clears throat> and we're just going to go bang bang. Okay, so they hit a Gurmag and a Hollow one, so that's probably pretty solid for the home team. Just gonna chump. I feel like I can card advantage my way out of this matchup. I don't necessarily, I'm not like wild about making my opponent discard a card. Just because they could discard like a blood gas or something like that. So I'm gonna wait. I might even take a shot from this and hopefully they play like a flame blade adept or a flame white phoenix. Nice. Gotta pay attention here. So if they go like discard something that we don't uh, get in trouble. Like we, we kill this before the the other creature can come back. This worked out great. Turn the Dell card. All right. Minus two, minus two, discard. All right. So we're going to destroy our artifact, two damage. No soup for you. <clears throat> they did ditch a blood gas and a flame white phoenix, so and if they take whatever, if they take Kologon's command, we can just bedlam reveler this turn. Probably just go get the sacred foundry. Oh no, we can't bedlam reveler this turn. I messed this up. Whatever, we're just gonna not compound our issue. So put this in the graveyard, this in the graveyard, that's two. Put these two in the graveyard, that's five, six, seven, eight. Bolt them to six, okay. No, I can't bolt them because I don't have enough red mana. But that's all right. We're still just gonna jam this Bedlam Reveler. <clears throat> that gets us another Bedlam Reveler. D's. We're doing Breaking Shadow. I can't play Death Shadow at the Grand Prix Archmage because it takes like Dismember and Snapcaster Mage. It just takes too many cards.
So we just want Ley Line of the Void. Probably Ensnaring Bridge. Um, Fatal Push is not great. Ruling on the Veil is not great. The discard spells are pretty good. Dreadboard is pretty good. Collector Brutality is not great. So we're going to sideboard like this. I'll be right back when we get some more Kofefe. All right, so no ley line, but we have a bridge, so I think I'm going to keep this. They have a ley line. Okay, so that's good to know about. The thing that's not trivial is that, like, them having a ley line actually makes their opening draws worse. Because, like, this deck needs a critical mass of cards to work. Do you mean, like, I think it's okay against Ironworks. Well, there's our ley line. Right on time, boys and girls. But it sucks that we he hit our looting. Yes. We have real news from uh, Archmage there. I think that, I don't think this deck's very good against KCI, but I think it's pretty solid against like um, Affinity or the Hardened Scales deck. So we ditched a bolt. You got a Hollow Boy for me? No, nice. Now getting. To this ensnaring bridge being turned on is going to be difficult. You definitely need like faithless looting to take advantage of that because like the card disadvantage from looting actually helps. It's also like just one of those first style cards. Wow. Yeah. All right, so they're Delvin. I'm going to go get Godless Shrine. I'm going to hit a land here to just kind of like keep going. It's not land. Alright, we're in trouble now, boys and girls. That Burning and Cree hitting that looting was big game. We are certainly in a bit of a jam. I'm probably going to end up just bolting this Blood Gas, as sad as that sounds. Wait for it to attack. Because we just do have to just empty our hand. We have to empty our hand and produce chump blockers. With these two bed levelers, that's going to be a lot harder. I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna move on. Them's the beats. I don't think we we're getting out of that because like they have two lightning bolts. They have one lightning bolt at least, and they didn't flash out their lingering soul, so their other card is good. Dude, they just they disabled the draw card function. Um, I don't think we're gonna change anything on the play. We're just gonna go like this. But I don't think we can cut. Um, I don't think we can cut uh, our Bedlam Revelers because they're our best card, but it, ha having Faith of Sluting should help mitigate this issue. Alright, I would like to play first. No Ley Line, but there is a young Pyromancer, so we're going to go. We have like Pyromancer into Inquisition. Okay. They have double ley line. That's just that's like a super mistake for them to do, I think. Because you you want the cards in your hand to be able to discard. Now you don't have that. We're just gonna take this lightning bolt and we're just gonna make like 
a lot of young pyromancer tokens. That's what they drew for their turn. So now they're gonna loot. Like looting doesn't really do anything for them because they're they're so they're much more constrained on mana. All right, let's go get a probably sacred foundry. Yeah, why do people put two ley lines in play? Archmage asking the tough questions. Hopefully we hit a land so we can go Pyromancer plus looting, hill. Hopefully we still hit a land. So we know they have Goblin Lore and one other card. Yeah, this is a this is also a terrible one to cast because this puts you even further down the rabbit hole of cards here. Okay, so they found a bolt. So we're looking for just land here. So we're gonna get rid of this. Gonna get rid of one of these. We're gonna play the start the slow grind. Maybe I should have brought in my wear and tears because wear and tear also hits a uh, hollow one. So I can see that. Well, our opponent seems content on doing absolutely nothing. That's what this happens, though. Like, like while this card is very powerful, if you start cards down, the card just gets a lot worse. So our opponent, this is like a lightning bolt. That's the only thing that makes a lot of sense. I kind of want to just. Oh shoot! I don't have enough mana. Um, I guess let's not compound the mess up. We'll just wait. <clears throat> just like K command, probably fire this K command off. Yes, we are hard casting the line. I'm worried about like a delve card here. Like a delve card makes me a little nervous. We've got pretty much everything else covered. A delve card is nerve wracking. So they hit. So they discard burning inquiry. It's calling turn play a hollow and nice. So what do we do here? Do we go up or do we go shatter shock? I think we go up. And then we'll just like block out against this thing. Okay, so we hit a bolt. We sniffed out they had a bolt. We're getting closer to casting this bedroom regular. Don't we just draw all our lands our deck? We can cast regular for sure. This is game three, right? What they three cards entered the exile zone. They ditched E. Played E for zero. Going to block.
Now I just kind of want to cast this. As like awkward as this sounds, because then it like has a tension to where they they, they don't know if they should blow, blow this or not. Because I don't want to just trade damage. Like I think we're just gonna like try to put on a little bit of pressure. The problem is, is like I don't want to um, I don't want to just like have them blow this up, and then we don't have like I don't want to just take chip shots from this. Yeah, but like I think we're putting like. I want to like lean on them, and if they end up blowing this, okay, so there's a Flying White Phoenix. Because like all their cards are pretty decent at this point, I think. They're just going to attack because we're not going to get the chance to block. I could like block and make him do it. I don't know, like. <clears throat> just sitting back without like our graveyard makes me nervous because we don't reliably have a good way to handle this. So if I just attack with one, what does that mean? They probably just blow it. This is three lands off. I'm just going to attack with one, I guess. Make him blow it. <clears throat> so we got a four turn clock here. Need. What do I need? I just need a way to kill this thing. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Still need a way to kill this. Maybe I should have brought my wear tears in. I probably should have, just because it's another answer to these plus this. But I've got two Dreadboards, three commands to handle this, so maybe that's too narrow. But I, I guess with Faithless Looting, you can do a lot of you can do a lot of loose sideboarding. Opponents tweaking out because Moto moves it forward automatically. You have two bolts, man. You probably have something here. Why would you just cast that? I would have cast that in a heartbeat. That seems so odd to me. Unless you have a lightning bolt. If your last card like lightning bolt, but even if the last card is lightning bolt, I think you just cast it. Oh, okay. Alright, it got us. So maybe I'm not, maybe I'm sideboarding poorly. Like maybe I'm supposed to bring in, oh, we got a good stretch in this morning. <sighs> maybe I'm sideboarding poorly. Like if I go over there to look here, maybe against that deck, I'm supposed to bring in like these plus these. And then I'm supposed to cut like my two veils, two brutalities. Probably fatal push isn't great against them because you need revolt to kill the flame wake phoenix. Okay, back up, bud. And then maybe just like two of anything. Maybe like a bedlam reveler if I think leyline's gonna be important and a lingering souls. I think I just got like outside worded there. Which is why why I think I lost that one. I think I was outboarded.
I'm not sure. I think I, I think I just got like beat. Just got got. So maybe I'm supposed to like trim on revelers, trim on the green souls. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna try next time. Because it is probably important to try to play around leyline of the void. But like if they don't have it, trimming on those cards sucks. And I have faith of sleeping. I don't know. Maybe killing a blood gas was greedy, but like they just chip shot so well. Like all their creatures are just little little limited boys that get in there. I don't know if I should protect my life total, especially when I can't block out. Mulligan. Gosh. I want to keep this. It's like not great, but I don't really want to go down to five. I have my land set up. One Faithless Looting turns his hand around. And yeah, that's a spell. We're going to keep all our spells. Aether Vial. Okay. So we're playing against like a Hate Bears deck. They put a card on top as well. We're playing against Fan Spirits. So. I could just take this Path. But they put a card on top. It's probably a creature. So let's just take the Supreme Phantom. Path doesn't really do that much for us at the moment. And hopefully they just cast this creature. They didn't just cast the creature. All right, well, they're probably going to cast it now. We still get the path, which is nice. I kind of still want to just take this spell color because it's really annoying, especially if they start building a house of cards. Like, I, I kind of want to just catch them being lazy with this dread boar. Wow, that's bold. There's the rainforest. I've looked at some of them. I think the, what, Suveil? Suveil? I think the Demir mechanic is pretty sweet. It's kind of annoying that in standard, it, in standard it just makes search for his Kanta better, which like, that card didn't need any help, you know? Like, that card's just very good on its own. Mausoleum Water. Alright, let's cast this. We're just going to trade. We're not going to let their spirits get out of control. It's kind of a weak target for our Dread Boar, but... Well, I love me a dissolve. Yeah, the new ones, like Suveil, or Su Suveil, whatever. The Demir mechanic is just like strict upgrade to scry. What is this going to do for me? Probably nothing. I could find me a discard spell. So I might have, should have cast it. Yeah, that was probably a mistake on my part. But they're going to just path this, and then we're going to get to like do more things next turn. Yield until next end step. So this path's gone. I don't know anything about my opponent's hand. Let's get Blood Crypt. One, two, three, four, five, six. I could flashback looting. Then maybe play brutality. I'm gonna condition lingering souls. Or I could just cast this lingering souls. Cast Bedlam Reveler. One, two, three, four. Yeah, we can just kind of do it all. So let's start with this. I don't think this is gonna hit. It could hit a collective company, actually. Okay. 
So that likely means that they have a company. So I think I'm just going to play this land. We're going to Reveler. Look for a removal spell. Hit this. Didn't hit. Flash this back. We'll just jump here. So I kind of just want to go up here. Let's see what we hit. Because if I hit a discard spell, I want to go like Shatter Shock or Kill This. Bang, bang. Now I kind of just want to go Shock Discard, or Shatter Discard, Flashback Lingering Souls, or I could just, I could just hit back here, find a way to kill this, Escalate, kill this and this, yeah. But no matter what, I'm going to get the last card in their hand, which I think is Collecting Company. So I could just go like this, put two lands, and then double flashback. Yeah, I guess we'll just go like this. Target player discards a card. The flash aspect of this deck is so annoying, but they already like play it flash pretty well. So I think I'm just going to shoot this Noble Hierarch. Which is more important, the Noble Hierarch or the Ether Vial? Probably the Vial. They're definitely discarding a card. Let's just shoot this. Let's get that collected company. Oh, they didn't have it. Okay. Had another spell color. All right, well, then let's attack with this. I thought that they had something else in that, but we're going to be able to go Pyromancer plus double flashback. I probably can just take this. Well, if they file in a lord, then I'm in trouble. Let's start with this one because if they if they flash if they hit this then um, then it just comes back into my hand if I ever remove it. Man, this this deck like snowball. It's like this deck almost plays like a limited deck when it's like you just kind of save your removal for what matters and then you just turn into this board control deck. Which is kind of sweet. Yeah, we went from having three power to five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven in one turn, which is kind of sweet. Spread out over a bunch of bodies. Okay, so I don't think this deck's ever going to be the bridge. I want this fatal push. I don't want my veil. And I probably want explosives. Um, collective Brutality is actually, I don't think Collective Brutality is great on the draw. I think it's fine, Harry, like, it, it's, it's not like, there, there's a top tier of the deck, which is like, Humans, KCI, Blue White Control, Bridge Vine, and, Humans, Blue White, KCI, Bridge Vine, one other deck. Like, it's all right. No, I think the hollow one's just the worst bridge vine deck. Tron's up there, too. And then the hardened scales deck. Like, it's not up there, it's probably like one below it. Like, it's just a fine, it's, a, it's, it's the best mid range deck you can play. Let's keep this. Opponent Mulligan, which is gas. Like, this is the best 
Unless you count Death Shadow as a mid-range deck. I think this is the best mid-range deck in the format. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bolt a bird or a, a mana creature here. Okay, so they're gonna play a vile. No, they're gonna play Mausoleum Wanderer. So I'm just gonna kill this because I don't want this to trade with something that I care about. I'd rather trade with this on my own terms. Like I am trading, we are trading. But I don't want to have something important have to resolve and them to be able to force it through. Oh, because they missed their land draw. So let's ditch this. Probably ditch this explosives. They have a worship. They just scooped. Okay. Worship would have been annoying to play through. All right. Hopefully we win two more. Be a good start to the day. Hang on, I'm going to get my wife a cup of coffee. You want to see mom do? You coming? Okay, I'm back. We missed this. See, I don't think you can keep hands like this. I have two discard spells. But I don't have a lot of cantrips to keep me going. That being said, if I hit, it's really good. But I just don't think I can keep this hand. Without knowing the matchup. Alright. Hand's a little slow. But our opponent will do as well. I'm going to assume we'll want that. So we can't stop them from generating mana. We can just take lead the stampede and then thought cease to collect the company. I think that's our plan. We They only had one mana, dude. I could take... I could take it. So that's what they drew for their turn. Elvish Mystic. This seems like a tough matchup. Gets good after sideboard, but kind of a tough matchup. Lenore Elves, oh, they will follow up a Heritage Druid, okay. So 
So this goes and gets blood crypt. And let's loot. Okay, let's go here and here. I could just blow this up. One, two, three, four. It means I can reveler next turn if I blow this up. Yeah, I think we're just going to go like this. It's kind of a mopey target, but this enables me to cast Bedlam Reveler next turn. So they're going to deal me three damage here, then four. I go to nine. Then we try to stabilize the board with our Devil Horror. Not casting that ever. All right. So next time we're going to loot into Lane of the Souls, probably. Don't know anything about their hand. Jeez. That's a good hit. So block here, take two. Need some collective brutalities. Collective brutality is going to be pretty solid in this matchup. Gains us some life, hits the mana dudes, and can hit a spell, which we showed they have lead the stampede, so they probably have some pretty relevant spells. They're just jamming. Always yield. Do I even play this land? I probably do. No, I, oh, I didn't take the right land. All right, well. That was a mistake by me. So they missed, which is gas. I think I'm gonna fetch. I think I just want more mana. So let's just get another blood crypt. Okay. Let's cast this. Attack with a lingering souls, and then like we fade one turn pretty much and we're in good shape. Because we're gonna escalate this, hitting the shaman in the pack probably. Okay. Alright. So escalate two modes. Minus two, minus two. Let's do it on this right now. Then K command this. And now we can attack with these, probably. So this checks this. I kill one of theirs, yeah. So we're just gonna attack with all these. And I'm gonna draw a step, smoke this shaman. We get punished, they draw an instant speed spell here. <clears throat> they drew an arch druid, which is a good one. So they're just dead on the board. Not quite. They just go double block, and then they go to one, basically. Find a removal spell, they're dead. Just all kinds of triggers. Just 
So looking for a way to kill something, we can find it. All right, let's just ditch both of these. If we go land kill spell, we're good. Didn't do it. All right, so let's just turn everything sideways. <clears throat> I feel like winning game one of this is big. I have to go like collected company into double shaman of the pack to kill me. That is their line of play. They did not do it. So I don't think ensnaring bridge is the way to beat this deck. I think we want engineer explosives, collective brutality, and really the last hope. The veils aren't that great. Um the discard spells are decent. They're just a way to trade resources. I probably don't need all of these lingering souls. And I don't think K Command is probably that great. I think K Command is probably better than. Lingering Souls is probably better than K Command. Because, like, three mana to kill a creature isn't really worth it. So, yeah, let's try this out. Just max removal, way to kill stuff. Grab some more coffee. Okay. This hand's okay. It's got a discard spell and a removal spell, so I think I'm going to keep it, but I certainly could. I, I would If somebody told me they would mulligan for better, then I get, I'd get. certainly understand that. Okay, so they're going to play their land of wells. They put a card on top. That's not a good draw. I like this Godless Shrine. I think the Godless Shrine's a good idea. Okay, that's nice. So let's see what they have going on, see if it's worth pushing this thing. I guess it's worth pushing it. But I will wait. If the collecting companies start raining down, we're not we're in trouble. I'm definitely not going to take any damage from this, so I think we're just going to deal with it. We don't have a revolt to turn on yet. Lead the stampede, that's a good one. This metal set all shaman of the pack and elvish arch druid. This drew four cards, Jesus. Uh, that is going to be a tough one to beat. Because the shaman of the packs are just going to like wreck me. This game already feels over. Because <laughs> so I can go like board control, but they're just going to go direct damage. Alright, we gotta find it. We need to kill that right now. That that is a way to kill it. And we can cast Bedlam Burglar next turn, which is pretty awesome. Land of 
files, okay? Metal Sentinel. All right. All right, Brutality's not bad. Thoughtseize isn't bad either. So I can go like Thoughtseize, Thoughtseize, Brutality. Take a bunch of cards. Make a bunch of elementals. I can even gain life if I determine it necessary. Because like this will take company. This will this will take company. This will take two shaman packs. That's our game plan here. And then just like hopefully just snowball a little bit. They have another shaman pack, and uh, so this deals me a lot of damage. So I probably have to actually not kill this. Okay, so let's go escalate two modes. I want to take both Shaman of the Packs and the Collective Company, so let's go minus two, minus two, duress. They have a scavenging ears, which is a problem, but I don't think we can let them have the shaman of packs. Especially if we're going to thought seize. I couldn't throw that. Because this puts me to 10. So if I go down to 10, they go Nettle Sentinel Shaman Pack. That deals me 5 damage out of 5. The scavenging is just going to body me. I don't have a lot of answers to this ooze. I think it's right to just take this ooze and then just try to like fight the board through with these Pyromancer tokens. And just not take any damage. Yeah, we're just going to take the scavenging ooze. Then we're going to definitely swing in with this Bedlam Rebel. start putting some pressure on our opponent. So we can go block, block, block. Like, we can do a lot of trading if my opponent gives me the option to. And if they give me the option to trade, then the um, then the Shaman of the Pack just gets worse and worse. So they kind of have to, like, play it now. We're both the truly the Stampede Jesus. Elvish Mystic, Dwayne's Elite, Shaman of Pack. Ugh. So I have to attack with Bedlam Revolver, which means I want to block here, block, block, the two of these block and block. The Chancellor, though, gives everything plus one, plus one, so I can't really attack my Bedlam Reveler. Oh, that was so brutal. These Shaman of the Pack, these Shaman of the Packs, have been, lead is going to be, they've been sick. So maybe it was right for me to take the Elvish Mystic, or the, the Shaman of the Pack, and leave the Scavenging Ooze. It probably was, because I have so much mana that, like, casting a Bedlam Reveler or casting a Looting and flashing it back isn't a big deal. And I probably punted. Punted that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Whoa. Okay, so what does that do? Engineer explosives for one takes out four of these. It doesn't take out any of my board, so we're going to do that. That was a nice draw. My attacking. 
Probably not. We still have Nettle Sentinel Shaman in the pack, so. But that was definitely a nice draw. So this probably eats here. I'll probably put three in front of here and then look to block something like this. Another, jeez. They had another Shaman in the pack. Oh. All right, that's not bad. So we're just gonna take a shot on the pack. Can okay, I start attacking? So put three in front of here, put this, put these three in front of here, put these three in front of here, and then it's, I don't even think I can attack. I need to hit like a lingering soul, then I can start really leaning into them. A collective brutality would be nice. Or something just kill this Chancellor. Metal Sentinel. Metal Pass. Now I'm in a lot of trouble because they're just going to play the Shaman and swing out. And I don't really have a lot of good blocks. Because it's tough to not block in a way that I'm just dead to this Shaman of the pack. Because, like, this block's here. This block's one of these. Two of my tokens block these. One of my tokens blocks here. And I can, like, chump a bunch of places. Make inroads on his board, but lose my Pyromancer. Yeah, so this means he's going to swing in this turn. Which is nice, like, it's nice to have them do it while I have all the information. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I only have seven blockers. This isn't close to being active, which is nice. I have good draws. Like a removal spell is great. Uh, Faith of Sleuthing is pretty good. Lingering Souls is pretty good. Um, Otherly, on the last hope, we'll start to claw me back into it. Okay, so now we got to make some blocks. So this block's here. This block's here. This trade's here. Well, no, hang on. This block's here. This block's here, and then I can put two in front of this Nettle Sentinel. Or I can put two in front of the Shaman in the pack. Or I can't even do that. So I can go block here, block here, block this. Then these trade, these trade. These trade. It, it comes down to Bedlam Reveler against these three cards, basically. There's no other way I can. I have to block everything. I could not block the this thing. So what does that do for me? What if I go like this? And this block's here. I take one damage. And then it's this, 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 and this against Bedlam Reveler Pylomancer. Yeah, that's what we need. I think I have to keep this Pyromancer around. Because it's going to be one, two, three, four, five creatures. Yeah, I think I've got to keep Pyromancer around. But if I'm going to block like this, I should at least probably eat this thing. No, I can't block like that. I have to, no, I can't block like that.
The problem is if I block the Chancellor, I lose my Pyromancer. I don't think I can get away with losing my Pyromancer. Because, like, the Lord doesn't really matter. It's just, like, oh, well, if we don't block the Chancellor, then these don't die. Yeah, so we have to... I need this Chancellor to die. This sucks. But I think this is how we got to do it. All right, well, that's not a bad place to start. Nope. Did we? Puts Pyromancer to block the token. Oh, I just would have eaten one more token or eaten one more thing. Yeah, I definitely clicked there. Should have Pyro and Nettle Sentinel. Yep, that was right. Yep, you were right. I think we're just going to submit. I kind of want another Lingering Souls after seeing that. But I kind of want my discard spells. I want my removal spells. Yeah, I think we're going to keep it. Though I could understand having another Lingering Souls. Maybe I could kind of land. I wonder if I would have blocked right if I would have lived. If I would have blocked right, ripped the Beveler, ripped the Beveler, Beveler, I still would have died, right? Because... In order for me to live, I need to interact with two creatures. And I didn't draw a removal spell. I think. Alright, we'll keep this. Seems like good, not great. But it's got, a di it's got a disruption in a way to catch up. We had that last game and it didn't work out. But they did draw, like, my opponent drew, like, six extra cards. Which is a tough way to Tough way to go. Alright, I think we're just going to take his company. And we're going to push whatever my opponent does. Because we have to, like, this Westville Abbey is not, you know, nothing. Just hanging out here. Looting will be nice. Not a land. Give me a faithless looting. They're probably gonna go two two one drops. Yeah. Something. Um, because I can fetch land for a basic at some turn, a Stachius. I can fetch land for a basic. Oh, they have a Chancellor? God. So that means I just have a Chancellor and a one drop. They played this forest. Did, they put, did I mark a forest off? Because I, I know, like, there's no way I'm using my mana, so I might as well, um, just play that tap. If I was, there's a chance I was going to use a mana, I would have played a fetch land. Let's go like this. Taking five. So I do they just have two lands? I don't remember if I marked off the forest. Alright. So we're gonna escalate with two modes. Minus two, minus two, gain and drain. Yeah, there's a lot of things to kill. The fact that we get to, you know, our kill spells also gain life. This Westville Abbey, though, is like some serious inevitability. Because now they can just activate it if they don't attack. Yeah. They're going to have all the mana in the world. And they had a shaman in the pack. Gross. And we're just gonna like Bedlam Reveler and they're gonna 
Like they're just gonna flip this Ormondal more like more than likely. Which does not feel great. Get another blood crypt. An EE would be great. Yeah, the Pyromancer's not gonna do it. So let's Bellum. Alright, dude. Don't just draw a land. All right. Oh, that's a beating. <sighs> what do we have coming here? So next time we're to untap, we'd have drawn. Oh, I can't even look at the what I would have done next aspect anymore. Yeah, it's it seems like a tough like. I feel like decks that want to grind with elves and let lead the Stampede resolve are, are not going to have a good time. Because we saw my opponent drew like seven extra cards in game two. Which is tough. Hey, what's going on, big man? Do you have energy? Your mom kicked you out because you have too much energy. That's why whenever I play Death Shadow, I read my stubborn. Like, everybody's like, why do you leave your stubborn denials in against Elves? I'm like, because I can't beat all their stupid, uh, stupid cards. They resolve. Hey, it's, uh, it's hard to empty my hand to have a snare bridge matter though. Scred it. All right, sounds pretty solid. I think I'm just gonna lead off with the blood crypt. I could fetch a swamp, but then this is pegged in the basically getting sacred foundry. Oh, so the black white Eldrazi deck. I think. I just want to take this path so that this pyromancer can start spiraling out of control. Probably gonna get a mountain. That's what they drew for their turn. If they play Tide Hollow's color, I will likely um Liliana it, because Liliana is not that great against this deck, I don't think. And it's worth it to get the value while you can. They're going to play Thalia, which is Dece. I would play Death Shadow, but like I would always play Death Shadow. So. You know, that's a tough that's a tough one to do. Or a tough one to call unbiasedly. Alright, escalate. We're gonna do this because the push can deal with like this flicker wisp at some point. I'm just gonna be mana efficient. Concealed courtyards, that's what they drew. So we we know four of the five of cards. The blue white control matchup has gotten much better. Since they've changed to what they're doing, the humans matchup's not good. But the humans matchup, the humans are moving away from the bugler, so it might be good to move back to like the way the deck was configured before, um, before bugler was printed. Hopefully, we could just edict this now. Like that would be sweet. Yeah, so I'm just gonna push this fetch shock.
play Lingering Souls. And then tick. I think that I don't really want to play my Liliana to not do anything. Like, just go up. They're going to ditch their Cave of Coilos. I'm going to ditch Lingering Souls. I think this is a, a matchup where um, I just want all of my resources. Like the fact that blue-white control decks have moved away from Supreme Verdict and Spreading Seeds is is a, a much, much better for, for the home team there. So now we don't really have bad draws. That's kind of annoying. They hit that for their turn, too. Maybe not. Well, that was pretty solid. Opponent literally rolls over in their chair, probably. That was like a nut draw. Next turn, we get to kill something, tick up, and flashback lingering souls, which is pretty great. They're always going to go flick a wisp, hit a token. We're going to Dreadbore. I ditch the Wasteland Strangler? Huh. I'm gonna off like cantrip. No, we want we want serum visions with Zubail. That would be ass. What's going on, big man? Good boy. Give me a calm. Give me a calm. I'm trying to get Phil to figure out the names of his toys. Okay, so they're probably gonna bring in rest in peace against me. So, I think I'm going to bring in Wear Tear because it kills Vile, part of Blade Splicer, and Tide Hollow Sculler, and Rest in Peace. Um, these Veils are not very good on the draw. The Last Hopes may are probably better than the Veils. Um, the Discard spells are likely better than the draw. We might just cut, like, trim down on all, like, the expensive stuff. Because, like, they're probably going to have Rest in Peace. Tygon seems to be <laughs> So Veil's going to be obnoxious and standard, though, because, like, it's not like, um, this Collective Brutality is probably not needed. It's just a slowest removal spell, I think. It's not like Search for His Kanta needs any help getting better, and Su Veil makes Search for His Kanta better. And so, like, like, Teferi's probably going to be pretty obnoxious come rotation. Like, Teferi is already obnoxious. Yeah, that's cool. Right, keep. We can grind them out and take a rest in peace. They mold a five. That's tough. Mold a five. Instantly get this card spelled. And then I put a card on the bottom. Ooh, you hit a Wasteland Strangler? That's nice. So they have a Ghost Quarter, so I'm just going to fetch a Blood Crypt and not give them the choice about what to Ghost Quarter, or I'm not going to, like, I guess it's. Stupid. I might as well just get a swamp because I can, um, because I can just 
fetch around whatever they hit. Like I can, if they go and get hit this, I get a, I get a, um, oh, that's a nice one. Goes for the value is annoying. I kind of just want to discard this lingering souls. Because I want to be able to K command next turn and keep this faith is looting. So I'm just gonna get another dual black red dual land with this. This is gone. I don't know anything about my opponent's hand. Oh shoot. And I have to fetch shot because I clicked through the end step. Now I'll just mess this all up because now I should wait to do it on their draw step. Yeah, dude, I messed this. I messed this up six ways to Sunday. Ugh, so bad. I don't even think I'm gonna shock. I think I'm just gonna like protect my life total. We don't have that many white cards and we can loot them away, but this was this was not good play from the home team. Alright, so we hit a dismember in Athalia. Now we can't even bend the regular. Blah. Wait, have a surgical? Are you waiting to like hit something with surgical here, bud? Alright, we're gonna go like this. Yeah, I would just play this so sloppy. While I wait for the draw step, he already had a card in hand. Yeah, that makes sense, B Temple. I was just like force of habit, probably. We got a reality smasher. An Eldrazi Displacer or a Thought Not Seer. A Gideon. Jesus. The MF -er of Zendikar. Oh, that's not bad. Now we'll draw step, bang, bang. God, when Cake Man's good, it's so good. <sighs> so they ripped the path, okay. We'll take it. What do I want to put this engineer explosives on? Probably like two. Two or three. Well, I'm just going to put it on two. Like it hits our own Pyromancer, but they have a lot of two mana cards that are important. Awesome. I don't even think I'm going to fetch a white source. Like, just get another Blood Crypt, and then I can just loot away any white cards that I need. Probably just like, I mean, we have looting in the graveyard, so it doesn't really matter. All right, yeah, let's scoop it up. All right, let's open up our pity chest. I think we have two pity chests. I think I have one from last night, too, unless I opened it. 